Many people work with pickups, and many don't. These are just a few of the special work bodies and conversions that are made with GMC cabs and chassis. The bodybuilders and conversion makers look for the same things in a cab chassis that you look for. Design, manufacturing, and component choice. A parts and service support network that helps keep a truck running and working for a long time. Comfort and convenience, so that using the truck is more of a pleasure than not. How dependable a truck is often depends on how well it's set up to do its specific job. Since job requirements vary, the right setup requires that a good cab chassis builder must give you a lot of choices, and GMC does. GMC cab chassis come in five lengths, three cabs, three series, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. First, you've got the 1500 series, what the world usually calls the half ton. Here you've got your choice of a regular cab with a 42 inch CA or a 56 inch CA. The 1500 series will handle anything from a six foot to an eight and a half foot special body, as long as the weight is within rated capacity. Next, you've got the 2500 series, higher weight ratings, some bigger components. Here you've got your choice of a regular cab, a crew cab, or a bonus cab. Each has a 56 inch CA. The crew cab is like a regular cab, but with a back seat and two more doors. The bonus cab is like the crew cab, but without the back seat, so it becomes a load and storage area you can lock up. And finally, with still higher ratings and capacities, you've got the 3500 series with most choices of all. Regular cab models in either 56 inch, 60 inch, or 84 inch CA. Then a crew cab and a bonus cab with a 56 inch CA. And all of these, except the 1500s, can be chosen in either two wheel drive or four wheel drive, which almost doubles your choices. Each series has a maximum gross weight rating. That's how we indicate the weight carrying ability for each truck. The maximum GVWR for the 1500 series is 6,200 pounds. For the 2500 series, 8,600 pounds. In the 3500 series, 10,000 pounds. The maximum GVWR is the most the whole truck can weigh, with body on, loaded, fueled, and all the passengers aboard. How heavy a body and payload that you can put on a cab chassis is roughly the difference after subtracting the vehicle's curb weight from its GVWR. The smallest and lightest GMC cab chassis, the short two-wheel drive 1500 series that can accommodate a six-foot body, can handle 2,757 pounds of body and payload, while at the highest end, a regular cab 3500 series cab chassis with an 84-inch CA dual rear wheels and required equipment will handle 5,667 pounds of body and payload. Another thing that's important to a cab chassis is how the body payload weight is distributed. A high load, for example, leans on turns, and that adds weight to one side and takes it off the other. A load that moves forward, like a hoist, can put a lot of unexpected extra weight on the front end. Setting up a cab chassis takes a certain amount of truck know-how. That's why truck people, like GMC people, can help you spec out a truck to meet your requirements. Okay, let's talk a little about the truck itself. GMC cab chassis have welded steel cabs attached to separate carbon steel frames. 
Some of the key cab areas are double wall steel construction, two separate stampings, welded together for strength. Every GMC cab and door gets a dip or spray bath that leaves a thick primer coating. There's a tremendous amount of optional cab equipment available to choose from. Not all of it available on every cab style. But there are four trim levels, each a little fancier than the one below. Tilt wheel, air conditioning, AM FM stereo with CB or tape, speed control, power door locks, power windows, and other options of special interest to work trucks are intermittent wiper system, a cold climate package, engine oil cooler and transmission oil cooler, cargo, dome, and roof marker lights, and folding seat back for hidden storage. Power steering is standard on four-wheel drive models, available on others. A three- or four-speed manual transmission is standard, depending on the model, with automatic as an option. On two-wheel drive models, big steel coil springs are used up front in an independent front suspension. Front springs on four-wheel drive cab chassis are tapered leaf, doubled with two leaves on each side, holding the front drive axle. The rear suspension is similar for both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. The rear axle is attached with two-stage leaf springs, and in some heavy-duty cases, also with auxiliary springs. The weight-carrying rating for a single rear spring set can be as high as 3,750 pounds on each side. I'd like you to see more of the quality and value details that go into a GMC cab chassis. And you can if you look at our film on pickup construction. Weigh your buying decision. Pickups in cab chassis are basically the same trucks, so most of what you'll see in that film will apply to your unit as well. Whatever your job, we think there's probably a GMC cab chassis that can help you do it better. Just remember, GMC means trucks, from the small to the very large. And that should tell you something about our cab chassis. They're work trucks, through and through. Give them a chance and they'll work for you. You know, there's a lot more to a good pickup than meets the eye. Sure, almost anybody can see the big picture. Gutsy looking truck with strong, clean lines, lots of glass, with a tilted windshield, functional engine compartment with room to work and space for additional equipment, a great cab with room to stretch, seat belts for three, a nice foam seat, vinyl or available cloth upholstery, big steel pickup box, double-walled side panels, tailgate. It's easy to see those things, right? But what about all those things you don't usually see, those invisible features and special details that slip past you? 
Isn't that where a lot of the quality is in a really great pickup? We think so. So we'd like to give you this guided tour of what to look for when you're buying a really great pickup. Let's start right here, in the cab. Sit in the seat. Stretch out. Is the seat adjuster convenient, but out of your way? How's the headroom? Look at the instruments. Are they easy to see? Are controls easy to reach? Does it have full-time power ventilation? GMC does. Try the optional radio. Can you get stereo with four speakers? GMC offers them. Two more back here. Does it have or offer a convenient package shelf? Is the seat back fully trimmed? Is the seat back high enough? GMC's bench seat back is a full 21 inches high for good support. Is the instrument panel made of metal? Is the ashtray conveniently located, large enough and solidly mounted? Is the glove box roomy enough and the door wide enough to support coffee cups? Do the doors stay locked, even if you accidentally pull on the inside handle? Ours do. And when you get out, stop a moment. There's a story all around the doorway itself. Door alignment held by hinges bolted in place with six bolts per door. A drip molding that protects the top and back of the doorway. A full half circle of secondary weather stripping for a quiet and tight cab. A full length sill plate to help keep out dirt and moisture. Even a door handle that's a little bit longer and a little bit deeper than some. On your way to opening the hood, look around. Are the wiper blades almost 16 inches long? Are they trimmed in non-glare bright metal? Are there dual windshield washer outlets positioned close to the windshield? Lift the hood. Is it insulated with a thick pad? Is it raised and held by sturdy lift springs? Can it be completely removed by taking out just four screws? Count the alignment blocks that hold the hood in position when it's closed. We use six blocks and two adjustable bumpers. How's the hood weather sealed at the cab? We use a 65 inch seal to weather strip the cowl with sumps and drains to carry water away. Notice the air intake, shielded by both a hood grill and the screen, which is removable for cleaning out the plenum. Where's the wiper motor? Ours is here, within easy reach for a technician. Look at the engine. Does it have 35,000 volt high energy ignition? Does it have a thermostatically controlled viscous fan that cuts out to save power when you don't need fan cooling? GMCs do on all models up to 8,500 pounds GVWR. Does it have an 11 inch clutch as standard equipment? Does it have a Delco Freedom battery that never needs added water? That has side post terminals to reduce connector corrosion? that has a built-in visible charge indicator. Does the engine have a closed cooling system with a coolant recovery reservoir that can be checked or filled from the curb side of the vehicle? And while you're in the engine compartment, look for other things as well. Is most of the wiring routed through protective plastic conduit? Are the inner fenders made of steel? Can you get to the jack, crank, and lug wrench from the curb side of the vehicle? Stoop down and look underneath. Is there an air dam to break up the air turbulence that creates drag inside the engine compartment? GMC does on most models. Is the steering linkage set well back? If the truck has available power steering, are the fluid lines tucked away out of sight? Is there a stabilizer bar? If there is, softer rated springs can be used without excessive lean on curves. Does the pickup have a true independent front suspension like this one with mirror image control arms on left and right sides? Does it have steel coil springs, standard shock absorbers, standard front disc brakes? Look carefully at the front bumper and how it's mounted. Our bumper is mounted to the frame at six points using frame side rails plus two main and two side brackets. Look at the wheels and tires. We use a full six inch wide rim and these are standard radial tires. Measure the box. This one is 72 working inches wide with a flat floor all the way and flat corners. Look for drain holes in the front of the box. Drains up here allow the box to drain even if the pickups parked nose down in a driving rainstorm. 
Examine the construction of the box. Ours has double walls. This picture shows it best. Double steel walls in the sides and tailgate. We also assemble our box components by bolting, in addition to welding individual pieces. This makes some accident repair easier. Look at the tail light. These lenses are Lexan. They're tough. Look at the tailgate. Does the handle match the truck's color? Is the gate tight? Does it work easily? Is the tailgate well finished inside, smooth, and the same height as the box floor? Are the straps solid? OK, let's lift the box and look underneath. Find out how much weight there is on the rear wheels when the pickup is empty. These are the traction wheels, the driving wheels. And on this pickup, even empty, we put 1,500 pounds of weight on these wheels. Check the rear brakes. Are the drums thinned to speed brake cooling? Are the rear brakes self-adjusting? Are the brake lines wire-wrapped for stone protection? Look at the shocks, the size, and how they're mounted. We stagger the mounting, one going forward and one rearward, to neutralize the rear end torque of the drivetrain. In simpler terms, to help control wheel hop. Examine the rear springs. These steel springs connect the driving axle to the truck. Actually transmit the driving and stopping forces from the axle through the truck chassis, as well as support the load and provide springing action. These extra leaves come into use only when you're fully loaded. The rest of the time, the longer, lower rated springs are what you ride on. Find the fuel tank. Fuel weighs six pounds a gallon, so where the tank is affects the trim, the balance of the truck. Ours is mounted here to counterbalance the weight of the driver, who usually drives alone. We add our auxiliary tank here to balance the standard tank so that all of the fuel weight is shared by the front and rear suspensions. But most of all, look carefully at the truck frame. The frame is the heart of the truck. Perhaps there is no more irreplaceable part. Look at it. Is it solid looking? Is it made of carbon steel with a 39,000 PSI rating? This one is. Does it have a section modulus of 3.14? This one does. Buying a pickup is serious business, even if its use will be recreational. So we want you to look at our pickup carefully. We believe you'll find quality in the special features that you want. So use our list to check us out. And remember, there's more to a GMC pickup than meets the eye.